You are ruling guidelines for handwriting practice. No big deal. It's a simple matter of There has to be an easier way. Hey everyone, CJ Carter here to show you a fast way to make guidelines with a computer to help you practice your handwriting or calligraphy. First, the basics. There are five lines we're interested in. The baseline, the mean line, the ascender line, the descender line, and the slant line. The baseline is where the body of the character rests. Up from that, we have the mean line, which most define as the height of the body of a small letter, traditionally the letter X. Because of this, the space between the baseline and the mean line is commonly called the X height. The part of a letter that extends above the mean line is called the ascender, and it typically reaches up to the ascender line. The space between the mean line and the ascender line is called the ascender height. Please note that the letter T usually stops somewhere between the mean line and the ascender line. While we could add a T line, it's not something that's done in practice. For letters that descend below the baseline, we have, as you might guess, the descender line. The height of the descender being the distance between the baseline and the descender line. Finally, we have what I call the slant line. I'm sure there's an official name for it, I've just never seen it. For cursive and calligraphic writing, this defines the amount of tilt a letter has. It is typically measured counterclockwise from the baseline meaning a straight up and down letter would have a 90 degree slant. If you are only using vertical letters, you don't have to use a slant line. And that's pretty much everything you need to know. Now it's time to fire up our program and make some guide sheets. The program we'll be using is called Inkscape. I chose it for maximum accessibility. It's a free program available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. Starting with a new document, you want to click in File, Document Properties to select the appropriate options for your area. For me, it's U.S. Letter. I'm changing the default units to millimeters because guidelines are given in metric more often than they are given in imperial measures. Since everything seems to be okay here, I'll click the close box and we'll get started. Our first step is to zoom into the upper left corner so we can see what we're doing. To do this, you can either click the zoom tool on the toolbar, or you can press the letter Z and drag zoom into the left corner. Next, we're going to write our project information. I'm going to click the text tool, choose a font that seems to be acceptable. I find that eight points is usually the right size. Not too big, not too small. This is where you'd say what kind of spacing you have. I'm going to write typical document demo. And now we put in the metrics of our page. We do this so that later on, we don't have to measure what our lines are, and we will know at a glance exactly which measures we're using. So we're going to do an X height of 5 millimeters. We'll do an ascender height of 3 millimeters, a descender height also of 3 millimeters, and a slant of 55 degrees. With that done, we can start putting in our lines. We're going to click the freehand lines tool. We'll click just under our text, move our mouse, hold down control to make sure that our line is horizontal, and click again. This is our ascender line. We aren't going to make the other lines in the same way. Instead, we're going to let the program help us make them. To do so, first we'll 
click on our selection tool. And then we'll go into Object, Transform. As you can see, our line is already selected. So we're going to go into Edit, Duplicate, or we'll hit Control D, which is what we're going to do from now on. And we now have a duplicate of our line sitting right exactly on top of our previous line, so it's hard to tell. Since this is our ascender line, we want our duplicated line to become our new mean line, which means we have to move it down the ascender height, which is 3 millimeters. To do that, in our transform box, we make sure that our units is in millimeters. And vertical, since we're going down, we hit the minus key and type 3 for 3 millimeters and click Apply. And that gives us our mean line. So we're going to duplicate that again and create our baseline. Our baseline is 5 millimeters down because it's our x height. So we'll go minus 5 and click Apply. Once again, we'll duplicate that line. And since our descender line is 3 millimeters down, we'll go minus 3 and click Apply. So now our horizontal guidelines are in place. Now we need our slant guideline. What we're going to do is, since we already have our descender line selected, we're going to duplicate that and now go into the Rotate tab, change our angle to 55 degrees, make sure it's rotating counterclockwise, and click Apply. Our slant line is a little outsized at the moment, but we'll fix that. First, we're going to zoom in a little so we can see what we're doing. You want to click the Selection tool. As you can see, it has still selected our slant line. And holding down the Control key to make sure we maintain our proportions, we're going to drag the upper and lower arrows to make sure our slant line fits inside our other guidelines. It's now a simple matter to grab your slant line and move it to the left. Press Control to make sure that it's moving horizontally. The spacing between slant lines is dictated by how long the other lines are. You don't want them too close together, nor do you want them too far apart. To do this, we'll select the four lines. We select the first one just by clicking on it. The other ones by shift clicking to make sure they're all together. And then by grabbing the right arrow, we just slide it in to make the size we want. You don't want to make it this short. This makes your slant lines much too close together. Usually you want to have it at least double some usually triple what the spacing is between the left side and your upper slant line. It's going to vary depending upon how slanted it is and what your preference is. In any case, once they are the size we want, we now shift click to include the slant line in our previous selection. And then we're going to go into Object, Group. And this is now all one object. If we deselect it and then click on any of the lines, all of the lines will then be selected. This is important for our next step. First, we're going to close our transform box. And then I'm going to hit the number 5, so I zoom into full page view. I'm going to click Edit, Clone, Create Tiled Clones. This is where all the magic happens. Since we're keeping it simple, what we want to do is make sure our standard of reference is correct. In this case, it's going to be inches. It's inches because that's how the page is drawn. It's not millimeters like how I'm handling the guidelines. It's sometimes confusing being an American. So we select our group and then we click the Create button. 
And just like that, our guidelines are made. If you find you've made a mistake or you want to play around with the things you can adjust, you want to remove all of these clones, which you do by having your group selected and clicking Remove. It's very important that this group is selected. Let me demonstrate. Click the Create key. So now we have all our clones. If we select any of our clones, you'll see that the Remove button is grayed out. We no longer have that as a selection. So in order to remove the clones, we have to select our original group. So we go back to the upper left corner and click. And now our Remove button is still grayed out. What's going on? Well, what's going on is that you've just selected a clone. You see, when you tile your clones, they tile on top of the original group. In order to access that group, you're going to have to click again, but this time hold the Alt key. Now, as you can see, we've selected the group of five objects that we had originally. Now our Remove button is active, and we can remove the clones. At this scale, there was something that happened that you didn't notice, but I'm going to show you much more clearly. One thing you will notice if we zoom in is that we have this double thick line, which is the ascender and the descender right next to each other. This might be what you want, but you might want space in between this group of guidelines and the next group of guidelines. There's an easy way to do that. First, we're going to remove our clones. We're going to click into the Shift tab. And we're going to use Shift Y because we want to have a vertical space in between these lines. Unfortunately, this works in percentage, which means we're going to have to do a little bit of math, or at least some good estimating. Here we have an ascender height of 3 millimeters, an X height of 5 millimeters, and a descender height of 3 millimeters. Added together, that's 11 millimeters. If we want a 2 millimeter gap or so in between, that means that we're going to need about a 20% gap. So for Shift Y, we're going to change that to 20%, and then we'll click the Create button. As you can see, we now have a space in between each group of guidelines. You can easily tell this because the slant lines are nowhere to be found inside this space. It's because there's nothing there. If we hit 5 to go to a full page, we can now see that we have a page filled with guidelines with spaces in between them. But wait, there's more. Black lines are fantastic if you're placing them beneath another sheet of paper. It shows up better than most other colors. However, when you are actually writing in these guidelines, sometimes all of this plaque can make it hard to see what you are writing in pen or pencil or whatever. You might want to change the color of these. That's very easy to do. Make sure that your group is selected. Just click your selection tool. As you can see, everything is selected. We have our group of five objects. And of course, if it isn't selected, you just select back in that corner again, press the Alt key, and click again to make sure that you've selected your group of five. And now to change the color of all of the lines in the group, you just go down here to your color bar, hold down the Shift key, and click whatever color you want them to be. It could be cyan or fuchsia, or maybe an orange, it could be red, it could be green, or you could go back to black. The choice is yours, and it's just that easy to do. While there are some advanced things you can do with guidelines, this will cover just about everything you're going to need for handwriting practice.
So have fun with it. And remember, stay creative and keep on practicing. Yeah.